the, the answer is it's not enough and uh, the, there are as many smokers today as 20 years ago when the World Health Organization got interested. The population has increased so the prevalence has gone down a bit but because of the population increase we are as many today and that would not necessarily be the situation if one from the World Health Organization also could use harm reduction methods. For example, in Japan over the last just six, seven years, they have introduced a product called Heat Not Burn and uh, that has resulted in a 50% drop in the cigarette market. Uh, in Sweden, we have reached the so-called end game, which is the target for many, many countries and also I think the World Health Organization of having no more than 5% smokers. And we, has, we have as many using nicotine as the average throughout the European Union, but very few are smoking, only 5%. The rest, something like 15% of the men are using snooze smokeless tobacco product and that is also dependence forming yes it's not a completely healthy substance you shouldn't use it if you're pregnant but it doesn't cause cancer respiratory diseases or cardiovascular diseases so i think the world health organization need to realize that we cannot wipe out smoking from the earth and if we can it will probably take hundreds of years yeah the reason uh, first of all i think i would start by going so far back as sweden did not take part in any of the two world wars and so the snooze which was an old habit and had been a habit in many other countries also but when you join the war, cigarettes are freely and widely distributed to the soldiers. And uh, there were very high prevalences of smoking in most European countries. While Sweden never went up so high because we avoided the wars and the old habit of snooze was allowed to remain. And then during the 60s, we start to realize that tobacco smoking is harmful and the Swedish government reacted swiftly. It was also a tobacco monopoly at that time and started to advertise for snooze use. For example, they said there is uh, another way to enjoy tobacco than smoking. And then we got some strong organizations in Sweden, they were called We Who Do Not Smoke. They were claiming to have smoke-free areas, etc. And that also forced smokers to move to something that didn't yield passive smoke and, and was annoying others. Also, the students' uh, radical behaviors during the late 60s and 70s, they were looking for ways to uh, look like real workers, uh, the ones that they were kind of supported left wing. And the snooze use was still to be seen at that time among uh, log, uh, forest loggers, uh, miners, uh, uh, farmers, um, uh, fishermen, etc. So the students, the intellectuals started to use news. And that's why I think we have um, uh, come to where we are today. Uh, nicotine is still in use in Sweden, but not, uh, not smoked any longer. And also interesting nicotine replacement products were uh, invented in Sweden. And I started to work with that also during the 70s and, and 80s. And more recently, we have something called nicotine pouches, which are very similar to the medicinal nicotine replacement products in terms of constituents. They have also started uh, from Sweden.